Hi class, this is uh, Mr. Hurdle coming to you live from the basement at Oaks Christian and today we're going to be talking about some of the essentials of geography and some of the basics as we start our lovely geography unit. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention uh, the five essentials to this class. You're going to notice these terms coming up a lot this year. And the five essentials are actually concepts that extend beyond history and the study of history. They're, they're basic skills that I want to be working with uh, you as students this year, which includes listening, reading, writing, meaningful academic conversations, and presenting. You're going to be doing all of those things here in this course at some time or another. We are going to focus a lot on writing this year. Uh, you will go, get to go present, uh, which can be a bit awkward at times, but uh, I'll help you get over it. So jumping into geography, a lot of this should be review and should be pretty standard, so I don't think you'll be, be too confused. Talking about longitude and latitude. Uh, longitude are the lines that run north-south. So here's your north and your south. Lines of latitude, excuse me, longitude run from north-south, but they're going to measure east and west, okay, because they're going to move from side to side measuring east-west. These lines specifically are called meridians in general. That's uh, kind of the term that, that are used. In addition to this, the most famous lines of longitude that we know are the Prime Meridian and the International Date Line. The Prime Meridian runs through the town of Greenwich, which is in London, and the International Date Line runs on the other side of the world, and from there, the International Date Line determines one date from another. Now, moving on to lines of latitude. With lines of latitude, you are essentially running, instead of a north-south, you are running east and west. There we go. There's our west. That's a W. And then the east. But they're going to be measuring north or south, right, as you move these lines up or down. So these are lines of latitude. These lines of latitude are also known as parallels. Some famous lines of latitude, the equator, the center of the world, and the Tropic of Cancer, which mem uh, basically measures the, where the summer solstice occurs, and then the Tropic of Capricorn, which measures where the winter solstice occurs. Both of those are lines of latitude. The Tropic of Cancer is in the northern hemisphere, and the Tropic of Capricorn is in the southern hemisphere. Uh, here's a picture of the world, just so you know. There's the town of Greenwich, and the town of Greenwich runs right through here, and this is the prime meridian coming down from the North Pole to the South Pole. On the other side of the world, you can see on the complete other side from the Prime Meridian is the International Date Line. And the International Date Line, like I said, is a line of longitude which measures one day from another. This is actually the Royal Observatory where the Prime Meridian was first uh, determined. Like I said, it's in London. You may have seen it recently on the Olympics. And here's actually a laser that's showing the area of the Prime Meridian, kind of where it shoots out. You can actually see it in the air, which is kind of cool. Uh, super accurate clock in Greenwich as well which can go and show a lot of cool stuff. And my favorite, really awkward picture of some old people hanging out at the Prime Meridian. Um, in addition, uh, here's the International Date Line, which goes across the Pacific. What you're going to notice when you look at the International Date Line is it ac actually zigzags down here. And the question is, why does it zigzag? Prime Meridian doesn't do this. Uh, it's for practical purposes. The international date line is going to zigzag in order to make its way around countries. Because if you think about it, you don't want to have a country where on one day it's Tuesday, or one place it's Tuesday, and then you move a mile away and another place it's Wednesday. So it's for practical purposes that the international date line exists uh, in this kind of zigzag, kind of awkward path. Here are the different time zones across the world. This is where when you go and you think about, oh, New York is three hours ahead of California, or you see something on TV and it says like Central or Mountain Time, or uh, you, Hawaii is three hours uh, behind, for instance, from us here in California. Uh, each of these, every 15 degrees, is basically an hour. So if you go and divide these around the world, uh, there's basically 24 hours in a day. And you can see the international date line on this side, and then the prime meridian right there, uh, right in the middle. Lines of latitude, you have the equator. The furthest north you could ever get is 90 north, and then the furthest south you can ever get is 90 south. And then everything in between. Then you have the, the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer uh, running them below. There's Tropic of Cancer running at 23.5 degrees north, and Capricorn running 23.5 degrees south. So just so you know, there are lines of latitude that exist. 
We're going to talk about map projections now, and I have to spend a second to talk about uh, the problem with map projections. The problem with a map projection is you're basically taking an object, our world, which is in three dimensions, and you're trying to put it into two dimensions on a piece of paper. And you have to make some approximations when you do that. When you go and you're trying to make something 3D, 2D, uh, you can do it, but it's not going to be exactly the same for obvious reasons. And we're going to be talking about the three main types of projections in this, in this little unit, the Mercator projection, the azimuthal, and the moleweed. And what they're used for, how they can be useful, and some of the weaknesses as well. This first one is the Mercator projection. Uh, Mercator was a cartographer, and a cartographer, a fancy word for a map maker. So if you don't know the word cartographer, he is a map maker. It's what he does. He makes maps. That's him right there, actually. The original Mercator projection was really useful uh, because it was used in navigation. And if you look at the period 1569, we're getting to the era of exploration, if you know your history, and uh, people are starting to navigate. So it's very good for using navigation. However, there's a bit of a problem in terms of going and using this for navigation, or not for navigation necessarily, but in terms of interpreting it. As you go too far north from the equator and very, very far south, the land masses towards the top and towards the bottom begin to go and look a lot bigger than they are. For instance, uh, Greenland looks as big as Africa, which it really isn't, and Antarctica looks absolutely huge. So when you go and look at these types of projections, it kind of distorts the word I have there is distortion. As you get further and further from the equator, the land masses look larger than they actually are. Um, some examples here, Greenland takes as much area as Africa, when in fact Africa is approximately 14 times greater than Greenland. Alaska takes as much area as the map as Brazil, when in fact Brazil's area is more than five times Alaska. You get the idea. As you go further and further, like I said, the distortion is going to become greater. This is actually a look at the original uh, Mercator map. Just kind of fun, something cool to look at. Uh, just wanted to point out here some of the kind of the period of history in which we don't have completely accurate maps. Look at South America down there. It doesn't exactly look like that, but they're doing with the best uh, type of knowledge they could. Now, the second type. Azimuthal is a polar projection, meaning it's looking at literally one of the poles that we have. So you have to think, what are our two poles? You could do the north or the south pole. In this case, if you look, this is looking from the north pole, from Santa Claus's view uh, onto the rest of the uh, Earth. The nice part about this type of projection is if you go and look from whatever center point, you can measure a true distance down this side or this side. Um, the example that I used in class was that it could be used for flight navigation for air travel. If you've ever been to Europe, you're not going to go the way you might think you would go, which would be across the U.S., across the Atlantic, and say you went over to London. In reality, say you're leaving from L.A., it's actually a lot shorter if you're going to go and curve over, basically over Canada, over Greenland, and you'll, you'll go to your destination. It's a lot shorter, saves on fuel costs, saves on time. Uh, this would be used by pilots where you can see it basically works with the curvature of the Earth um, because we do live uh, in a world where the Earth is round. Here's the uh, UN logo, which actually has an azimuthal projection, which is kind of cool. Fun. And the third type of projection is the moleweed projection. The moleweed projection kind of looks like a mercator, but if you can see, the edges are rounded, so it's not filling up the side of the box like a mercator would. With the moleweed, it's actually usually used to show how much something is distributed in the earth, how much it's spread around. So it basically is going to shrink relatively the sizes if you look at the other parts that I said were so stretched on the Mercator. You go and you look like Greenland or Antarctica, for instance. Those ones are going to go and be more in scale, essentially. And what you're going to do is actually the area on the map, as much as it doesn't look like that, but the Earth is curved, any box has the same area. Um, for instance, say I look at this box. That little box takes as much area on the earth as, say, this box, which looks a little bit stretched out. But it is stretched out because you're trying to put, like I said earlier, a three-dimensional ob uh, object onto a two-dimensional surface. So that area of China up there and that area in the Pacific do have the same uh, area, even though the box looks larger, if that makes sense, because of the curvature of the earth. Like I said, it's often used to show how much something's distributed uh, around the earth. An example here um, is measuring the sea surface levels of Freon. 
and this mole weed projection is just showing the amount of freon on the surface. So there you go. There's the uh, three types of map projections and kind of the way we use maps and how maps work. Uh, this unit is a, basically a short unit, so come please see me if you have any questions and I'm more than willing to help you. And longitude and latitude, pretty simple, and uh, you probably don't have many questions there, but please come see me if I can help you out. Take care.